back, everybody. <laughs> Folks, my next guest appears regularly on Sirius Radio, and she won Best Female Comic at the Las Vegas Comedy Festival. Please welcome Pat Brown. <laughs> Well, hello. Uh, my name is Pat Brown. Say, hey, Pat Brown. Hey, hey y'all. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I live in New York now, and I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Although New York is one of the most expensive cities in the world, it makes me realize how frugal I am. Because without fail, I walk through Times Square at night, and I'll immediately become my father. I was like, uh, why are all these lights on? Who got all these lights on? Turn them off, turn them off, and turn down that thermostat. <laughs> yeah, the only reason I'm staying here so long is because I'm a saver, people. I am a saver. I st yeah, I've always been a saver. I still got birthday card money from the 80s. <laughs> yeah, you know, I hit rock bottom. I start paying for everything in $2 bills <laughs> and Susan B. Anthony coins. <laughs> uh, I live in Harlem. Um, yeah, because I'm supposed to. Um, <laughs> it's the rule, it's the rule. Uh, <laughs> but I've always wanted to live in Harlem. Uh, I love my neighborhood. I live around working class black people. I got just enough white people in my neighborhood to have a good grocery store, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that's all you want. That's all you want is a good grocery store. Everybody deserves a good grocery store, right? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you will judge a whole neighborhood by that grocery store. You will, like, uh-uh, girl, look at these apples, look at these apples. <laughs> they don't have a good school system. <laughs> oh, uh, that's, yeah, that is my thing, and that's my pet peeve. I cannot stand a grimy grocery store. You know your grocery store is bad when you go in the inside and it has a dark alley. <laughs> you talk to the cashier, so, uh, hey, guy, where's the mustard? He's like, down there. You're like, oh, shoot. Uh, why is that baby stroller upside down? <laughs> uh, no, will you mind walking with me? <laughs> no, oh my God. Uh, I thought it would be, uh, uh, that's, the, that's the thing though. Uh, you never know what you're gonna get when you have uh, an influx of white people that move into your neighborhood. You never know. It's always feast or family. You just don't know. It's all, historically, it's always been that way. You don't know if you're gonna get smallpox or fresh strawberries. You just don't know. <laughs> Like, come on, strawberries, please. <laughs> please, this time, strawberries. <laughs> uh, I thought it was gonna be easier to date in New York, eight million people, right? I just need one. Um, I am single, but I'm trying to quit. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's hard though, single over 35, that is hard. Single over 35, that is slim pickings, people. That is slim pickings. That's like an old bag of Halloween candy. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no Snickers left, ain't no Reese's Cups, ain't no Hershey's. <laughs> Just black licorice and candy corn. <laughs> uh, it's a Tootsie Roll in there, but it's a Tootsie Roll in there, but it ain't got a wrapper on it. You're like, I ain't gonna mess with it. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna mess with it. I ain't gonna take a risk. I ain't gonna take a risk. <laughs> I tell you who uh, inspires me, though, that's the couples, right? The couples, they still inspire me. I watch couples, I do, a lot. Uh, I am creepy with it. Uh, I watch couples like guys look at cars. I'm like, oh my God, that is nice right there. <laughs> yeah, that must be one of the new ones. That is nice. Yeah, that is a nice ride right there. Oh my God. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that in black. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I tell you who my it couple is. My it couple is Barack and Michelle. I love them. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause you can tell they genuinely like and love each other, right? They look like they still do it, don't they? Don't they look like? <laughs> they look like they still do it. Have you ever looked at them at the press conference and they looking at each other? It'd be so intense. You're like, oh my god, they just did it. They just did it. Oh my god. Our president's nasty, oh my God. They just did, I can't look at them when they just did that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna miss Barack, I am gonna miss Barack. Uh, 
that was just such a win for black people. It uh, made us feel good. It did. To see yourself reflected in the highest office in the land every doggone day made you feel good, made you feel proud, made me feel uh, powerful. Because sometimes I go places and I supervise. I don't even work there. <laughs> I just show up like, who we got on the floor today? I'm going to need somebody to pick up a spill in aisle six. They were like, who are you? I am progress. That's who the hell I am. <laughs> I am progress. <laughs> Keep talking. I'll take you off this imaginary schedule. <laughs> Even if you didn't like Barack, if you don't like his politics, you don't like his policies, you at least have to admire the story, people. You got to admire the story. The story is an uh, American story. The story is a story of an underdog. Think about this. This is the first time in our nation's history that a president has ever admitted he fathered two black kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thomas Jefferson didn't say nothing. Walking around with that plantation full of Lenny Kravitzes and he didn't say a thing. Sex tape is available on iTunes.